Hey everyone, today, we're diving into a groundbreaking development that could change the future of fuel production, a new system developed at the University of Michigan that efficiently produces ethylene from CO2. This is a major leap forward for sustainable fuel production, and we're going to explain how this incredible technology works and why it matters. Let's get into it. Welcome to Trend Storm. Chapter 1. Artificial Photosynthesis for Sustainable Fuels Imagine being able to take carbon dioxide, something we often think of as just a pollutant, and turn it into useful materials like ethylene, which is a building block for plastics. Well, that's exactly what researchers at the University of Michigan have done. They've created an artificial photosynthesis system that combined two carbon atoms together to form hydrocarbons, with unprecedented performance. So, what's ethylene? It's actually the most produced organic compound in the world and is typically made from oil and gas through processes that release large amounts of CO2. The direct application of this new system is to turn the carbon dioxide that would normally be released into the atmosphere into ethylene, which could then be used in the production of plastics. Chapter 2. Superior Performance in Ethylene Production Professor Zedian M.I., who led the study, has stated that the performance of this new system is five to six times better than other methods that use solar energy to reduce carbon dioxide into ethylene. This means that not only is the process more efficient, but it's also much more sustainable compared to traditional methods that rely on fossil fuels. The long-term goal here is to create longer chains of carbon and hydrogen to produce liquid fuels. These fuels could be transported easily and used with current technologies, opening up possibilities for sustainable transportation. Chapter 3. How it works. The device absorbs light through two kinds of semiconductors. Imagine a forest of tiny nanowires made of gallium nitride, each one only about 50 nanometers wide, sitting on a silicon base. These nanowires are submerged in water enriched with carbon dioxide and exposed to light that's equivalent to the sun at noon. What happens next? The energy from the light releases electrons that split the water near the surface of the gallium nitride nanowires, creating hydrogen. This hydrogen then feeds into the reaction that produces ethylene while the oxygen is absorbed by the gallium nitride to form gallium nitride oxide. The key to transforming CO2 into ethylene lies in the copper clusters on the nanowires. These clusters are great at grabbing onto carbon atoms from the carbon dioxide and turning them into carbon monoxide. With the addition of hydrogen and more energy from the light, two carbon monoxide molecules are believed to bond together eventually forming ethylene. This process happens at the interface between copper and gallium nitride oxide, where oxygen atoms are stripped away and replaced with hydrogen atoms. Chapter 4. Efficiency and Future Prospects Now, let's talk about efficiency. The researchers found that 61% of the free electrons generated by the semiconductors were used to produce ethylene. To put this into perspective, while another catalyst made from silver and copper achieved about 50% efficiency, it could only run for a few hours before breaking down. In contrast, the University of Michigan's device ran for 116 hours without slowing down and they've run similar devices for up to 3,000 hours. This incredible durability is partly due to the synergistic relationship between the gallium nitride and the water-splitting process. The addition of oxygen actually improves the catalyst and helps itself heal, allowing the system to keep working for longer periods of time. And that's not all the system produced ethylene at a rate four times higher than the nearest competing technologies. 
In the future, the team wants to produce even more complex compounds like propanol, which could lead to liquid fuels that could power existing transportation technologies in a sustainable way. According to Bingxing Zhang, one of the researchers, producing such multi-carbon compounds is their next goal, and it could bring us closer to making existing vehicles and machines sustainable. This breakthrough in artificial photosynthesis is an exciting step toward sustainable energy and carbon recycling. Imagine a world where we could turn harmful CO2 emissions into useful fuels and materials, cutting down on pollution while creating resources we need. It's innovations like this that make us hopeful for a greener future. Source. University of Michigan. So what do you think about turning CO2 into fuel? Could this be the key to a sustainable future? Let us know in the comments below. If you're excited about this technology and want to stay updated on more groundbreaking science and tech, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to Trend Storm, and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.